Hi, welcome back to another video for our Math Quiz app. We're almost finished here. We have our program running, we have a quiz, we have a score. We need a timer now. And so that's what we'll do in our video here, is to create a timer which will show the number of seconds up in the corner and also update the progress bar as the time ticks down. So let's get started with timers. So the code that we're going to work with is going to be near the top of the screen. So go find the area that says create a new game object called G. And we'll create a new object right after that. So the object that we're trying to create now is called a countdown timer. So type in countdown timer and we'll call it timer. Equals a new countdown timer. And Android should automatically give you two new methods called on tick and on finish. And that way we can have an event that happens every time the clock ticks and events that happen when the timer expires. Countdown timer has a space for two parameters. As you hover over it, you can see it is expecting two longs. So we can have decimals or integers. I'm going to put in the first is 30,000. So 30,000 is 30,000 milliseconds. So that means the entire timer countdown will be 30 seconds. Each tick is going to be 1,000 milliseconds, so that's one second. So now the timer is set up, and as soon as we tell the timer to start, it will do what it's supposed to every one second, and then after it's done with 30 seconds, it'll run this method. So I'm going to create a new variable and count the seconds as called seconds remaining. So seconds remaining will tell us how many seconds are left in our timer, and we can use that to update our progress bar. So we want to update three things in on tick. The first is we'll take off one second from the seconds remaining, and then I'm going to print the seconds remaining on the timer, text view. And then for the progress timer, we use the method called set progress, which will simply set the thermometer level of your progress. And I'm not going to just use seconds remaining, but have the full length of the time, 30, minus seconds remaining. So it's a, it's a countdown. I'm also going to put uh, the letters SEC after the seconds remaining so people understand that it's the time. All right, so now for the finish function. So when the timer expires and all 30 seconds are gone, let's first of all disable the buttons. So answer 0, 1, 2, and 3 should be set to false for set enabled. And then I'd like to update a message at the bottom of the screen that tells the user the time is up. And also I will attach the score that they got, which was the number of correct and uh, that's over the number of total questions. And remember, I have to have a minus one because total questions was off by one. Don't forget to put in a semicolon after the function here of the uh, countdown timer. So let's see if this program will work. I'm going to build it and run it on my phone. So I choose go, and now I should have a timer started. But it doesn't seem to be working. I've got the timer defined, but why doesn't it actually show up? Well, I probably forgot to actually start the timer, so let's go back into the code. So a good place to start the timer would be when we push the start button. So right here in this section on line 71 is the area where I hid the start button and chose next turn. So let's choose this. Let's do timer dot, and sure enough, there's a method called start. Okay, let's try that again. I'll run the code and see if we can start the timer. All right, so let's click the Go button, and sure enough, I see 28 seconds going, and the timer is ticking down. So it looks like we're in business, and it should stop at the end. Okay, you can see that the time is up, and if I try to do any more work, I can't click any of these buttons anymore. It looks like they've all been disabled. So the timer seems to work. Now your timer actually might need a little bit of adjustment. So let's go back into our main activity and let's select the properties. I think I probably need to show you that I changed something here. I changed the maximum value of the timer to 30 and the progress I set to be default to 20. So I think you might see that needs to be changed in yours. Okay, not bad, we've got a timer working. We have one more thing to do is when we're done, it would be a good time to delay for a little while and then show the start button again so we can play another game because right now it's at a dead end. 
Okay, so the goal now is to have this green button reappear at the end of the game. So let's give it a time of uh, laps, maybe three or four seconds to see that the user can see the score. And then we'll push the go button and restart. So let's look up some information on how we can do a delayed action event. So it's a little complicated. If you were to just freeze your app and then tell it to do a for loop for four seconds, it would completely freeze your operating system. So what we're looking for is something else called a handler. And it says here in this uh, tutorial that handlers are used to execute a runnable task on the UI thread after an optional delay. Now what are they talking about? First of all, a runnable task, well that's obvious, it just runs. But what is the UI thread? And so the UI thread is a, con a conceptual idea right here, is that there is a continual flow of messages that come through the operating system and it is used for multitasking. So it gives a little time slice to each app as most operating systems do. That's the UI thread. And so what we want to do is put in a message that says, hey, we're going to do something in another four seconds. And so put it into the queue. So here is some code. How to execute an event after a delay. So we're going to create something called a handler. We're also going to create some code called runnable, and you can name this anything you want. And then inside there, they, they just print something out to their uh, console app. So we're going to actually hide the button and restart the game. But this is the idea of what we're going to create. And then finally, post delayed. So something like that. So let's go up into our, into our timer area. So I'm back into line 25 to 42. And we want to put a message inside of on finish. So let's create some space after the time is up message. So we're going to create a handler. Now I'm going to use the word final because we don't want to have multiple handlers going on. So we'll call this thing uh, handler. And we'll make a new handler. So you can see that handler.postDelayed gives us some options. So we can create a runnable function and then give it a second number, which is how many milliseconds this will happen after it's delayed. So let's put in our two numbers. So in the parameters here, post delayed, we're looking for a runnable object. Well, let's see if we can make one, new runnable. And sure enough, there is a new runnable. And there is the runnable object. And then we can do something in there. So let's say button start dot set visible and set visibility. Remember that was view dot visible. There it is. So that's our first parameter. And you can see that uh, we need to have something else. We need to have a comma here. And how long is it going to last? Let's say we'll do a delay of 4,000 milliseconds. So it looks like all of the code now is nicely uh, formatted again. So I'll run my app and play a game. Okay, let's start the game and continue playing here. All right, so it says time is up. And now, as you can see, the four second delay. And I push go, and away we go again. However, it looks like I need to reset the timer, not only for the end of the game, but you can see the number of seconds is now into the negative. So I need to do some more than just reset this. So let's go down into the uh, start button. And let's see if we can uh, adjust a few things there. So, so let's reset the number of seconds remaining to 30. And let's also create a new version of our G, which is game. So that way it restarts. And we'll go and try to run the game again. So this is the first time through. Everything is normal. Time is up, it says. Now I press go, and the new game starts. We've got the zero score, and it looks like the timer is working. So. I think we're about done. Now the last few things that you might want to finish up, you can adjust, of course, the colors. And how about the font size on these buttons? That's pretty small. It would be nice. And instead of 20, why not say the word 20 PTS, for like for 20 points? So that way the user doesn't get confused and think that it's some answer to this problem here. So there's the main program. We got it going. You've learned a lot about arranging things with a constraint layout. We've worked with some Java classes. We've worked with a timer and a progress bar. So uh, hopefully some good programming techniques that you've uh, picked up and can use in your further projects.